I'm currently stuck in a hotel room under quarantine conditions here in Hong Kong. Um, while I'm here, I thought I'd do a little project um, for our Cook's Projects website. You can find the spreadsheet uh, that will help you do this experiment on our website, www.cooksprojects.com. And so this is a, a STEM or a science, technology, engineering and mathematics uh, project and also looks at how to measure the uh, performance of your car. I'm using the Cooks Projects uh, race timer and I'm going to use it in the speedometer mode. So I'm utilising the best facilities I can find in this room where I'm stuck in quarantine. And we've got some track coming down here, down towards the timer. And that's the drop. We need to take some data, uh, one of which is to measure the vertical drop. So the drop is going to be 60 centimetres. I've picked four cars at random from uh, the Hot Wheels collection we have. We have the Rigger Motor, the Hyper Truck, the 1949 Ford F1 and the AMG Mercedes CLK DTM models. The final piece of data that we need is the weight of the car. So we have our Rigger Motor coming in at 26 grams, the Hyper Truck at 31 grams, the red 1949 Ford F1 at 35 grams and finally the bronze AMG Mercedes is weighing at 39 grams. We need to turn on the race timer and put it into speedometer mode. I'm using the datalink version of the race timer so that I can get information onto the computer but you can use the original version for this project as well. The race timer is now ready to measure the speed of every car that goes through the unit. We need to find out what COM port the race timer is on. So to do that, firstly I need to connect up the device. We go into Device Manager, select that, and as you see the comes up here and we want to look up with uh, the ports COM and LPT. We click on that and you'll see that the USB serial connection is on COM port 5. Next we're going to select our chosen um, serial communication device. I'm using PuTTY. And it's a serial link and we know it's on COM port 5 and the speed 57600. Now we can open it straight away from here but just so that you can see what other settings if you're going to be using a different uh, serial communication port software we have the speed of 57600, the data bits are 8, stop bits 1, parity non, and the flow control X on, X off. Right, so let's open up that port. At the moment, the race timer you've heard beeping in the background is in its setup mode. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to put it into the speedometer mode. There we go. The data comes through and it's ready to measure the first car. I've loaded in the car performance and energy calculator spreadsheet into Excel and I've got the results from our car runs and so I'm just going to start inputting the data. So the first car that we ran down there was the uh, racing car, the Rigger motor and the release point was uh, 60 centimeters, we know that, the weight was 26 grams and the speed of the car on the first run was 11.4741 kilometers per hour. That means uh, that the car was 86.38% efficient. It lost 0 0.02082 joules in energy, or correctly, uh, we should say it turned it into sound and heat. And it started off with uh, 0.15288 joules. So let's look at uh, the second car to go down. Uh, the second car was the hyper truck and it weighed 31 grams. Its speed 11.5774. Uh, 
That gives us an efficiency of 87.94%. And uh, it converted into friction, basically, 0 0.02197 uh, joules of energy. If we now look at our Ford truck, that was weighing in at 35 grams. And it came past at 9.591 meaning 60% uh, efficiency, uh, losing 0 0.08159 joules. Finally, our AMG Mercedes, that was our heaviest car, and it weighed 39 grams, and it came past the sensors at 10.1997, 68. 0.26% efficient and losing 0 0.07 joules. The ease of using the data link version of the uh, race timer means that uh, the information goes directly into the computer and you can copy and paste it into different uh, applications. So here is another Excel spreadsheet showing the results for four runs for each car. So the speed for each car varies for each of its runs down the track. And this can be caused by a number of different reasons, uh, either the angle that the car is released at or movement in the track between runs and various reasons why uh, the friction levels change. So I've taken an average of those four runs and you can now see that the Hyper truck is in fact the most efficient car running at 72%. Uh, next comes in at the Mercedes CLK car followed by Riga Motor and the worst performing car in terms of energy usage is the Ford F1. So I hope you've managed to see that you can use the Cooks Projects race timer to gain extra information about your car setups and look at the different ways that changing the tracks and your cars can affect their overall performance and their efficiency. Thank you for watching.